Hello and welcome to the 2402 lab PowerPoint screencasty thingy for the reprodu reproductive system. Mm -hmm. Clap, clap, clap. Let me turn my phone off. See, I'm a human. My phone can be on sometimes. <clears throat> All right. Uh, anyway, we are uh, sexually reproducing organisms. So this is just kind of an overview. We conduct internal fertilization. We introduce sperm cells into the female uh, reproductive system where fertilization occurs and then they develop uh, as an embryo and then a fetus and we'll talk about that during the development section which is later. Uh, interestingly, see that fun fact there? That's what makes males males and females females across the biological world, right? If you are a sexually reproducing thing, one of those sexes is going to produce a small gamete and they call that one the sperm cell and they call that individual the male and the one that produces the large gamete is the female. It's fascinating. Um, it's a whole quality versus quantity sort of thing. Females invest in quality and males in quantity. Uh, if you ever want to ask me about that, come to my office hours. All right, so uh, the gametes are produced through meiotic divisions, meiosis one and two, I'll mention those later and there's a big video about it in the video folder. Uh, spermatogenesis is kind of male. Uh, gametogenesis and oogenesis is uh, female. Now there's a term spermiogenesis here which is like we're getting rid of some uh, extra organelles and making the sperm motile and that's kind of a second process that occurs after spermatogenesis. So notice that spelling difference there. Next the we'll start with the male. Here's a simple diagram of the male reproductive system and this is kind of a big you know macro view. So the testes are where you make the sperm sperm cells and the specifically inside of tubules called seminiferous tubules, which you'll see later. Then they go on to mature in the uh, epididymis and th those things are labeled there. So uh, epididymis is kind of this little, little sidecar thing on one of the testes. Looks kind of like a haircut on this guy, right? <laughs> that's funny. Okay. Um, mm -mm. Anyway, the vasa deferentia, that's two, that's plural. Va vas deferens is sing singular, is the tube that takes the uh, sperm via muscular contractions up and around the bladder, back past a few glands, which I'll talk about, which produce most of the fluid that's in a, in a um, single uh, ejaculate, is what they call that. The seminal vesicles are paired, big uh, glands that produce about 70% and those are some of the secretions there. Mucus for just volume and then fructose to, to power the sperm cells. Prostate gland produces an alkaline uh, mucus which then, which is there to reduce, I'm sorry, increase the pH of the female's reproductive system. Female reproductive system is fairly acidic uh, as an antibacterial effort. The bulbo-urethral glands, which are kind of these little guys that are paired right down there, they don't produce much volume and they don't actually contribute much of any to the ejaculate. They do produce a pre-ejaculatory fluid, which acts as a lubricant. Um, the penis, you can call it a copulatory organ, so that it's, it's basically evolved to mate. It's evolved for sex. Uh, urine release is kind of a secondary uh, uh, secondary function that just is kind of accidental due to the fact that uh, you've got a, an organ there to uh, to basically inject sperm cells. Um, the penis gets erect via increase in blood pressure. You probably know this. There's two structures called corpus, uh, there's two things called corpus corpora, I should say. The corpora cavernosa are paired and the corpus spongiosum is a singular structure and they both fill with blood. Uh, there's no bone in a penis, the, uh, um, regardless of the nickname. I accidentally, I accidentally paused, hopefully I didn't destroy anything. Uh, but some, a lot of animals do have an actual penis bone, it's called a baculum. You don't have to know that. Your dog and cat have a, have a penis bone if they're boys. All right, female reproductive system. Again, top-down view. Uh, ovaries are where you conduct oogenesis. There are structures called follicles that form around the oocytes and kind of hold them as they develop. 
And then after that follicle releases the oocyte in ovulation, that kind of becomes what's called a corpus luteum, which produces some different hormones, as we'll see. Uh, you want to fertilize. You, in a perfect world, you'd have fertilization occur in the oviduct. Now, you see there it's called fallopian tube, right? That's a little archaic, okay? Um, for the term oviduct, it's more descriptive. It takes the ovum from the ovary to the uterus. And you'd like to have fertilization occur in this, in this oviduct. Once you get to the uterus, if you've got a, a little embryo developing, you want it to implant. So this is going to be the site of implantation. You're going to kind of, it'll kind of attach itself to the, to the inside of that, uh, that uterus. You see a couple of different tissue types, myometrium. This is smooth muscle. And this is what causes uterine contractions. And the endometrium is the inside. And this is the part that the mother develops the placenta, her portion of the placenta uh, using. And it supplies nutrients and, you know, basically holds on to that developing uh, embryo and fetus. Now, the cervix is kind of like the bottleneck. It's kind of this little restricted opening right here. And there's an internal os with aperture or an external aperture right there. Um, but regardless, that's that's it's basically there to keep that baby from getting out too soon, right? It really takes a lot of work to, so I've heard, uh, to get the baby out. And I'll take their word for it. The vagina, contrary to popular belief, is not an external uh, structure. It's an internal tube. So this right here is inside of the female, this, this little tunnel right here. And it is also a copulatory organ. Uh, it functions in reproduction. It's where sperm are deposited. Now, you may have heard it called a birth canal, but again, that's the same way that the, 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 the penis acts as a urinary structure because it just kind of is in the way. Uh, if you're going to get a, a baby from in here to out here, you're going to have to go through here. So, But its primary purpose is, is for sex. Now, I don't have any image here, images here, but the external genitalia of a female, which is often called the vagina, is a misnomer. Uh, it should be called a vulva, and it consists of some labia, which are uh, um, sensory and uh, protective, and a clitoris, which is homologous, comes from the same embryonic parts as the penis, and it's, uh, you know, erectile and also has lots of nerve endings. All right, mammary glands, these are secondary structures uh, exclusive to mammals, so we've got rights on those. Uh, they're for feeding the offspring once they're born. It's a real interesting, it's kind of a unique uh, way to feed an offspring. A lot of animals have to go catch a you know, food item or bring it back in their stomach and barf it out a lot of times, um, but we, uh, at least females, are able to manufacture a food product which is then secreted conveniently out of little ducts uh, located at a, a, a nice target area, right? The, the nipple and the areola are different colors so that they are different color than the, than the breast tissue in general because it acts as like a little target. Um, the milk is made in things called lobules and those are uh, these structures. They look a little different than the model, but that's a lobule, this is a lobule, whatever. And then the ducts that take it there are called lactiferous ducts. Oh, those are some fun facts. Those facts are fun. All right, let's look at a close-up of the testes. And this is a, the same slide that you see in the video in the uh, photo folder. Um, those little round things like at B there are the seminiferous tubules. That's where you make the sperm cells uh, and you produce some hormones, which we'll talk about, which you'll read about in a later slide. Uh, the Interstitial cells, which are in between, produce testosterone. This is what you think of when you think of testes is testosterone, but they, the testes produce multiple hormones. And once those sperm cells are made in the lumens of the seminiferous tubules, so in this area, they're, they're made, they put a tail on there, and they kind of almost finish them, and then they ship them off to the epididymis, which we saw as the, the little hairstyle earlier, where they're made motile and a couple of other finishing moves are put on them. Uh, I'll talk about haploid and diploid, or actually you're going to go watch a video about that. 
uh, haploid, diploid, and spermatogenesis meiosis. All right, let's go to the ovaries. Uh, you see that the follicles are not all the same. They start off as primary follicles. They get a little bigger, a little bit bigger, where they add more cell layers. They call them secondary, and eventually they become these big vesicles, right? Like a big container, and uh, that's what's called a vesicular follicle. You may see it called graphene follicle too, but vesicular is more descriptive. Uh, the cell, the cells inside, called oocytes, right there, uh, change. Uh, depending on their which follicle they're in and what state of development they're in. So as they go through meiosis, they start off diploid and they're called primary oocytes. Once they go through the first stage of meiotic division, they uh, become haploid and they're called secondary oocytes. Uh, eventually, they're released. When you uh, when a follow when a ovary releases a an oocyte, it doesn't release an egg. It's another common misconception. It releases a, a precursor to an egg or an ovum called a secondary oocyte. So ovulation should be called oocyte ovulation, but you know, not going to change it. Once that oocyte is released, that follicle now in the bottom picture over here becomes a kind of a, a dense mass, a solid mass called a corpus luteum, which begins to produce another, an extra hormone here called uh, progesterone. So we already made estrogen in the follicle and then you continue to make estrogen and make the new horm this next hormone called uh, progesterone uh, once it becomes a corpus luteum all right now first off uh, watch the meiosis video gotta watch it okay I'm not gonna go into all the details here that you, I'm gonna ask you questions about so go make sure you double watch that uh, but I'll summarize. Meiosis has two basic divisions, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. Meiosis 1 turns diploid cells into haploid cells. Did I say meiosis 1? Yeah, meiosis 1 turns diploid cells into haploid cells. Meiosis 2 uh, just doubles those haploid cells. So you end up with a potential four functional cells uh, after both phases of meiosis are done. Uh, in males, you do make four. Uh, that N right there just refers to the, the, the number of chromosomes, right? So, if, for instance, with humans, we are we have 46 chromosomes. That's 2N. 2 times N would be 2 times 23, right? So, therefore, N is 20, whoops, 23. So, you're making sperm cells or egg cells with uh, 23 chromosomes. That way, they, when they recombine, when a sperm cell meets an egg cell, 23 plus 23 gets you back to that 46 number. Now, in females, because I mentioned earlier, they their quality over quantity, they make one giant ovum ultimately, and then three discards called polar bodies. So they put all the good stuff in that one cell, and that's the one that gets to go get fertilized, whereas males are just making these, by the hundreds of millions, they're making sperm cells and just sending them off, right? 99.99999% of them never never uh, make anything of their lives. All right, last, <clears throat> last uh, slide, and I'm not going to talk about I'm not going to go through this. You can read. Um, but there's your hormones. These are the ones that are listed at the end of your chapter, last page. And I've given you, uh, in the first thing there, I, I've told you where they're made. So testosterone is made in the interstitial cells of the testes and then function what do they do um, interestingly we think of testosterone as being you know male thing which it does it makes sort of your typical male sexual characteristics like deeper voice and you know higher muscle mass bone density and stuff but it also uh, peaks your libido your sexual interest Estrogen and progesterone are typically thought of as female hormones, uh, and they do lots of female-oriented stuff. Uh, they are made in the follicles and CL, by the way, corpus luteum, uh, and they promote female. I'm going to talk about a lot of these female sexual characteristics, like uh, breast development and uh, bone structure, and so on. They also this hormone also uh, helps with ovulation. It, it's like involved in it, not going to go into detail, and also development of the endometrium. So that endometrium gets thicker with the exposure to its estrogen. 
progesterone's re released after ovulation. So therefore, we want to maintain the endometrium at this point. All right? We want to keep it together. And also, this is why uh, female sexual interest often increases after ovulation. Uh, activin and inhibin. Activin's not listed, but I want you to know it. Simple. Uh, where it's made uh, in these uh, sustenticular cells and or in the uh, in the for the inhibin, same thing. But it's also made in the ovaries. So just generally, and what they both do, or what they do. Sorry, I'm kind of jabbering now. Activin stimulates follicle stimulating hormone production, which we'll see down here, and inhibin inhibits it. All right. So follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. You have to know their names. I'm just got the abbreviations here. Where they're made, anterior pituitary. What they do, kind of the same stuff. Develop those gametes uh, with some emphases. FSH, you imagine, deals with the follicle and luteinizing deals with the corpus luteum. But in general, you could say uh, egg and sperm development. Now. Gonadotropin releasing hormone is produced in the hypothalamus uh, and it acts on the anterior pituitary to cause the anterior pituitary, bleh, anterior pituitary to produce and release its hormones. Last two kind of maybe kind of interesting ones here. Uh, prolactin made in the anterior pituitary stimulates milk production. So your, the mammary glands will make milk when exposed to prolactin. Uh, but it also promotes maternal behavior. So if you're making milk, you're going to tend to be interested in nursing the kid and taking care of the kid. Prolactin also helps in males with spermatogenesis. Lastly, oxytocin, uh, made in the hypothalamus, but stored, you remember, from endocrine system in the posterior pituitary. So it's released by the posterior pituitary. Stimulates uterine contractions, milk ejection, not milk production, and also sort of snuggling and bonding behavior, if you remember. So uh, when you when you snuggle with somebody, you're going to produce oxytocin, and it helps bond you with that individual, even if that individual is your dog and you're petting it. All right. Well, sorry I went on so long, but there we have it. Watch the videos, read, uh, look at the photos, and see you in the next Ring episode.